but <clears throat> that's what I was going to ask you. So I think Christmas will be Christmas, but then after January, a lot of places, bars, restaurants, they're going to be overstaffed. Oh, and, I think, and I think now they're, we're finally going to get into that transition that you're only going to get what you want. You're not just going to hire someone for hiring. Yeah. So I think hospitality will make a comeback like that. And you'll see, like, everyone's going to be a lot more appreciative of it. And now you can't just have no experience and be a bartender. Yeah. So a lot of people are going to learn so much from this Christmas. This Christmas is going to be bloody great. That, that was probably one of the... Not one of the worst things, I'd say, but post-COVID, one of the least enjoyable things about being a supervisor or a bartender was the fact that you were having people join the bars who had zero experience, who weren't even going into the bar back role first. They were coming yeah. straight to the bar. And then they like they weren't appreciative or didn't understand why they had to work so hard because yeah. they hadn't seen anyone else it. do it first Nothing, or, mate. or put the effort in as a bar back. Yeah, I think one, from what I remember, you know when you were a bar back, right? Mm -hmm. And then the first shift you have as a bartender, you feel that pride and honour in putting on that bartender shirt. Yeah. In places that you don't have different codes for the shirts. But I remember it used to be like a great satisfaction. I remember seeing so many bar backs all of a sudden we're in the changing room and they just put on that bartender shirt and they're so proud to have it on. So what happened with the and pandemic? You know, it's because most of the time, like the bartenders weren't told when you were promoted. Yeah. You would just come in in that blue shirt and all the bartenders would look at you and like, oh, he's a bartender yeah. now, big man. Exactly. But I think when a lot of people got confused, I think this is something that we should talk about uh, quite thoroughly is about the pandemic. So when lockdown happened, okay, we're all at home. When things reopen, most everything's kind of still the same the way we work, like mm -hmm. not with the restrictions, but the bartenders, the drinks and everything. Yeah. Because at the time, people are struggling to get a job as well. Yeah. And then for me, when it all changed, it was Freedom uh, Day. So when we were open already, but then all of a sudden the economy's opening up, the demand is absolutely ridiculous. Mm. Brexit is actually now in effect. In effect. So that was a very bad combination. And then what happened was, this is why 99% or even 99.9% .9 of uh, establishments in hospitality struggled with staff turnover, just quality of staff they were getting. Because, you know, look, every time we had new staff, they were all from Eastern Europe or just Europe yeah. in general. You would rare, rarely get an English bartender or an right, English right. bar back. I mean, the uh, first bar I started in, 80% Italians. Yeah, same. Mine was Italians, Hungarians. 80% um, Italians. We get Polish. Me and one other English person. No, sorry, two other English people. Yeah. And then the rest were others. Yeah, when I started, they were all Italian or Hungarian. Literally, that was it. But So what happened was, then all of a sudden, you have all these job openings, and people are just looking for a job, and then people... Uh, yeah, I could do bartending. And they kind of lost like what we loved about it, like passion of it, the working hard. And they thought it was like, just go to a bar and make drinks, which it wasn't. And this, I'll say now, it was the worst time ever in hospitality. Like mm. the amount of people, because a lot of people you get with people in uni and they don't really care and they don't even need the job to pay the bills. So exactly, they get the amount the, of people the, that the... would call in sick, the amount of people that, just wouldn't even show up to interviews. You'd book a hundred interviews, five Three or ten would, would show up. up. Yeah. Like that is literally like five to ten percent of interviews would show up. And then ten percent of those ten percent would actually get the job. Mm. So that was really hard for everyone. And like you know it better than anyone how much it was a struggle. Now with that being said, yes, it was very stressful and a very difficult time for us. But it also has made us be very good with the managing and the training new people. And I think now Post-COVID bartenders, when they're going to be learning with pre-COVID bartenders, they're going to be actually quite comfortable. Mm. And I think they'll feel a lot more support than previously. Although I think you need the tough love when you are starting to bartend. But yeah, I I think we are going to go in a very good direction. I think that there's already markets to be bartenders. Um, Fairing's getting popular again. Cocktail competition's starting to go up. London Cocktail Week was really popular. Like just random random people were saying like, oh, we're here for London Cocktail Week. They're not even bartenders. Yeah. Yeah. Only issue with London Cocktail Week this time was tube strikes. 
Yeah. I remember the, the place I was working in, we we cancelled our, our London cocktail week cocktail specials that we were doing just because Oh, you were doing specials? Yeah, we 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 had a whole range of like different Negronis and then we ended up having to cancel because no one came in. Because we where I was working it was very not touristy, it was more yeah, it's quite business work, it's just corporate, you know. So all these corporate people who were normally coming in to work weren't coming in because of the super tracks. They were all remote working, which one is another downfall of the hospitality industry, this remote working, because then it means no one is forced to come central London anymore. Yeah, look, I realised a lot of that as well. Like, one of the best things about our job is the way we get to interact with customers. And you know when, like we used to do this, these cocktail classes, mm. where we'll take customers behind a bar, like 10 of them, they're all booked. Yeah. And they'll like make these two cocktails. And I used to love doing them. They were really fun and engaging. And then with the pandemic, we started doing them over Zoom. And I still love doing it. It was one of my favorite things to do. I used to do like once a week or sometimes twice a week. And I love doing it. But then you've got to kind of realize like it's got to be fun and engaging. But then some of the groups you're getting, because these are mostly companies. Like a lot yeah. of them are just like a group of family members yeah or you can have just like these girls in their early 20s you just want to have that cocktail catch up with friends or you're going to have these lawyers which are the worst ones you could have for cocktail class because they are so serious <laughs> like um oh god was it so when it became a part of pouring um we were doing an espresso martini and i think i told him to pour um half of the bottle of the vodka and this guy just poured the entire bottle and his name was Drake, and I was like, okay, it looks like Drake knows how to party, and then everyone just quiet. Like, every single lawyer is just quiet, like, we're just doing this. No comment? And I'm like, tough crowd. <laughs> so, there's another new, like, lawyers, Actually, like... you're not in court. You're with a bartender. Like, you can up. tell You can tell me what kind of partying you do. I'm not going to use it as evidence against you. It's like, probably done the same or worse, so like... No, the worst part is when we... We done the cocktail, and, you know. We have a try, and everyone's like, "Oh, that's nice," or "Oh, it's a bit too sweet." All of a sudden, I try it, and I'm like, "All right, guys, what do we think?" And then everyone's just like, "Not a word." They're just like, "I'm like, okay." It was meant to last like an hour. That cocktail class lasted like for twenty five minutes because you just had no interaction with them. Mm. But, no, but that's the type of people you meet. Like my favorite is Americans. I love having American customers and you have time to talk with them. They're so fun and enthusiastic. Especially like, yeah, it's true.